guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to my channel, welcome. Today we are going to be discussing minimalism with children. When I first started on my journey with minimalism, I scoured the internet looking for bloggers like myself. Bloggers that had a family but were incorporating minimalism into their lives. And what I came to realize was that so many bloggers that put their story out there were doing so in a way that they were kind of taking an extreme approach to minimalism. An approach that I felt wasn't very realistic to the average modern day family. Now this is not to say that their way of doing it is wrong because I don't think there is a wrong way of doing it at all and in fact many of these people I aspire to be more like but where I'm at in my life as a parent, as a wife, I felt that I could use my channel to share my journey with minimalism in kind of more of a realistic way that I think will be more relatable to the average person, the average family, the average parent. So my goal with these minimalism videos and with this video today is to give you guys kind of small actionable steps that you can take to move towards more of a minimalist lifestyle without going too extreme. Move towards a lifestyle that frees up more of your time to have more valuable time as a family, to really do the things that you enjoy and spend quality time with each other without putting too much of the focus on the stuff. So with that being said, let's jump into my first tip of moving towards a minimalist life with children. Limit new possessions to special occasions. So for my children, one of the very first things that they learned is that we do not walk into a store and buy something just for the sake of buying it. I know as a parent, it's really tempting to get our child something that's super cute or something that we think is gonna keep them quiet as we're shopping to make our trip easier for ourselves. But all this does is teach them consumerism, teach them that every time they walk into a store, they need to leave that store having bought something. And that is just an unhealthy habit in general. The most important time when this point comes into play is with items, with toys. So if our children want a specific toy or item in a store, we approach it like this. Say my kid wants a Spider-Man suit because the new Spider-Man movie just came out and commercials are everywhere with Spider-Man. I will ask my son, if you still want this item by the time your birthday comes around or Christmas comes around, then we will rediscuss this issue and we will see if you still want it at that time. If at that time he still deeply desires that item, then it is possible that he will get that item. What this does is teach a child to really value what they actually want because it's so easy for a child to think they want something because society has kind of like flooded their brain with images of it but then a week later want nothing to do with it. When you teach a kid to really wait and have patience for what they truly want, they're going to value that item more and you're not going to have a bunch of random junk filling up in your home. Activities over possessions. So say you have a child that loves animals. Perhaps instead of buying them animal figurines for their birthday, you can buy them a year pass to the zoo. Maybe you have a child that loves Disney princesses. You might buy them a trip to Disney on Ice to watch one of the Disney on Ice shows. Anytime you can find an activity, a theme park, any kind of learning stimulating activity, that stimulates their imagination and their creativity rather than an item, you are doing your kid a service because you are teaching them to think beyond an item. You are teaching them to use their creativity and their imagination and learn further than just what they can learn with one single solo item. Teach them to give. My kids and I make a habit of going through their rooms about every two to three weeks and get rid of stuff. And what we ask is one simple question. Is this an item that you want to keep, that you feel brings you joy and you find value in? Or do you think you would like to donate this item to another little boy or girl that would find more value in it? You would be amazed at a young age what little kids really understand and how deeply they feel for other children. 
and they will want to give away items if they know that it is helping another child. Any opportunity that you have to kind of involve your child in charity is going to do nothing but help them short term and long term and teach them throughout their life that things don't matter. What matters in life is helping others, the experiences, family, love, charity, and the more you teach them that from a young age, the happier they are going to be throughout their lifetime because it is proven that even when a person is down, the way to bring them out of that state of mind is to help someone else. Pay attention to current passions. This is probably my number one tip for limiting toys and possessions in the bedroom. So, for example, right now I have a seven-year-old who pretty much likes baby dolls, princess dresses, um, Shopkins, and Barbie dolls, and those are the items that she has in her room. My son is really into Legos, cars, and trains, so those are the items he has in his room, very little else. I give you permission right now to press pause on this video, walk into your child's room, and look at their toys and notice the first item that draws your attention that you haven't seen your child play with in a few days or a few weeks or a few months. More likely than not, they've been playing with the same items in rotation over and over and over again because those are their current passions. Those are the things that draw their attention and keep their focus. Having too many toys overstimulates a child and doesn't teach them to focus, doesn't teach them to appreciate what they have, and they're really not getting a good use out of what they own. Notice what they wear most often. A big one for us in our house is school uniforms. And in the past, I kind of bought a bunch of different uniforms because I wanted to make sure that my children always had clothes available to them. I honestly don't know what my mindset was, but I wanted them to have options. After a while, I realized how ridiculous that was because my daughter only wore dresses. I got rid of all the other items, kept enough dresses for a week and two extra, everything else was gone. In terms of their clothes that they wear at home, I noticed that my daughter was wearing the same clothes over and over and over again. I started to realize why are the rest of the clothes in there if she never wears them, I got rid of them. With my son, at the time, I was still dressing him and I realized that I was also picking probably like the same 20 items for him as well, just based on what fit him the best, what looked the best on him, and so I did the same thing with him. I got rid of all the items I never grabbed for and I donated those to another little child. Nobody is paying as much attention to it as you are and your children are happy, they're clean, they're healthy, they're fed. That is what is most important. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and leave a comment down below if you would like to see an additional video on additional tips for minimalism with children or leave a comment letting me know what other video you would like to see on the topic of minimalism. And until the next video, I will see you guys later. Bye.